Hey everyone, this is kind of an addendum video or an extension video on section 2.4 in your notes. We need to do a little bit more with the vocab and a little bit more with the periodic table than I originally put in there to make sure we're moving at a correct pace. So we're going to start with a hydrogen atom. And what we know about the, this, the models of the atom that we've been working through is that the nucleus is very small, compact, and positively charged. The most of the atom after that is empty space and the electrons are around there somewhere and we're going to see this evolve as we go through but we're focusing still on the Bohr model of the atom and how he thought that electrons would move in concentric rings kind of like orbits around the nucleus of an atom and what we need to look at today is how the periodic table ties in with this so we've got our nucleus right here with the hydrogen and hydrogen is number one on the table we can see it right up here and what we need to do is we need to start filling in our electrons. Now, when you have a very small atom like this, the electrons are easy to do because it's, it's you know, we can look at their rings and start to fill them in. So hydrogen, we've got one proton uh, because we're atomic number one. And that means that we only have one electron in our hydrogen atom. So this electron is in an orbit around the outside. And we'll do electrons in blue. And so we've got one electron right here. When we get into larger atoms, this is where it gets a little confusing. And the first thing we need to look at on the periodic table are the periods. And these are the rows. And these go side to side, and you can see them highlighting on your screen. And the periods, they tell us the number of electron shells that an atom has. So periods, go back to black, periods. These are the number of electron shells or orbits if you want to think of it that way. So this is the number of rings outside of our atom. And we know from looking at emission spectra activities that all atoms have every single period. So even though hydrogen only has one occupied shell, it has up to seven of them available. And this is like floors in a building. You can have a multiple story building and you have multiple floors, but you don't have to have people for those floors to exist. Hydrogen kind of works that way. So let's take a look at another example now. So let's get rid of that guy. And let's do something larger. We'll bump it up to, let's uh, look at a nitrogen. So nitrogen, oops, wrong pen size. Let me fix this real quick. Nitrogen is atomic number seven. So we've got seven protons in our nucleus and we can see nitrogen over here highlighting on your screen. Seven protons equals seven electrons and that is to give us a neutral atom. Now notice nitrogen is in period two, so we know we have two electron shells. So we've got one orbit and two orbits. Remember we can have up to seven, but we only need to show the occupied ones. We need to remember that our first shell can only hold two electrons. Now notice how many elements are in that first period on your table. We've only got two there, so that's a little interesting. So we'll fill in our two electrons. We'll do them in red this time so we can see them. So there's one two electrons. Now if nitrogen has seven electrons total, seven E minus, that means I need five more in this outside ring. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five electrons. Now check this out on your periodic table. Nitrogen is one, two, three, four, five columns over. Hmm. That's also very interesting. That's the other pattern on the periodic table that we need to take a look at. In the, the columns, these are called groups, and they tell us the number of electrons, E minus, in the valence. Squeeze that in there, valence. Let me make my window a little bit bigger. In the valence shell. So if we are in period five, or group five, I'm sorry, if we're in group five, so we've got column one, group one, two, three, four, five, all of these atoms over here in the fifth group have five valence electrons. And valence is the outside. So valence, this is the outermost portion, outermost portion. So if I'm in the third shell, that would be my valence, then any element here, so let's say sodium has got three shells, so the valence is number three, and I have one electron in that valence shell because I am in group one. So the periodic table works kind of like a big crosshair. Now the only one we are ignoring for now are the transition metals, these middle metals that you see highlighted on your screen. These ones don't follow the rules quite the, at the pattern we need them to, so we're going to focus on elements one through 20 right now. Uh, so 
Make sure this gets added to your notes for 2.4. Uh, again, this is the Bohr model of the atom and it's how it ties in with the periodic table.